Hey, hey now, what are you doing, man? What's up, dude? Um, what we got here? Just making some New Year's resolutions. Damn, it's that time of year again, isn't it? You know, what we got here? Let's see. No more energy drinks? Yeah, man. Um, How many do you drink right now? Two, maybe three a day. A day? A day, yeah, yeah. Oh, you think that's you think that's sustainable? I don't know. All right, all right. What you got next? Um, I want to try and get into the gym six times a week minimum. Minimum. Okay. So, yeah. what's your current training right, like right now? Once, maybe twice a week. Okay. All right. Um, I think that might be a little challenging. I don't know, man. We'll uh, we'll see. Okay. And then what's the last one here? Uh, no more alcohol. I want to wow. stop drinking. That's gonna be tough, man. You're a college student right now. I'm sure you're going out, what, two, three times a week? Yeah, something like that. Okay, all right, well, I mean, these are good, these are good New Year's resolutions. How sustainable do you think they're gonna be, though? Mm -hmm. I don't know. All right, guys, so Noah and I are obviously talking to you guys about New Year's resolutions because it is that time of year already. I can't believe it. Yeah, I hope that you guys enjoyed our professional, high-quality <laughs> intro to today's video, but it is indeed time for resolutioners to start buying their gym memberships, getting in gear, signing up for coaching. Yeah. And first, one thing that I do want to point out is stop like degrading or discounting people that are starting to go to the gym. Oh, oh yeah, it's, absolutely. It's annoying. People are trying to better themselves. All right, now we have that out of the way. Yep, Let's that was our PSA, public service announcement yeah, yeah. for that. Um, so obviously what we're gonna be talking to you guys about is gonna be more um, you know, body recomposition focused, right? Mm -hmm. Fat loss, muscle gain, things like that. But all of these principles can really be related to any New Year's resolution goal that you want. You obviously sure. saw Noah talking about energy drinks and alcohol and things beforehand. So, um, but the first one, Noah, you wanna take us to the first one? Yes, so fat loss focused on speed. A lot of the problem when people start a resolution to lose weight yep. is they want to lose 20 pounds, 30 pounds by the time it comes spring break in March. Yep. They want to be losing 2% of their body weight each week, which is just not sustainable and it's going to lead to probably you cutting calories so low that you just going to have a relapse or binge eat or something like that. Right, absolutely. The The slower that you can go with fat loss, the more sustainable it's going to be long term. I know that's not always what people want to hear. They want to drop that weight quick. But you got to remember, the faster you're dropping your calories and you're dropping your weight, the more lean body mass you're losing along the way too. And that lean body mass is what's going to be metabolically active for you. So that's what we want to hold on to. We hold on to that by doing a fat loss phase very slowly. We resistance train and we keep protein high. So those are things to remember when you are dieting. So the next problem with New Year's resolution is usually sustainability, which kind of falls into the first one that we talked about. Um, you know, people get so gung-ho right off the bat, they wanna do everything fast, whether it's fat loss, whether it's um, trying to bulk. Mm -hmm. A lot of people are trying to put on muscle in the new year. And one thing is we really, we, re we really do want to channel that like, gung-ho like, oh, yeah. motivation. We don't want you to lose that no. at all. We want to, again, channel that, but we just want to make sure that you're using that energy that you have in a smart way that's okay. going to provide long-term success. success. Yep. Setting small, achievable goals um, is a very, very important thing to do because we're human, right? We're not robots. When we achieve something, it gives us an extra sense of um, accomplishment, right, of energy moving forward. So we set these little goals, whether it's losing this amount of weight, you know, in the first four weeks, or um, trying to increase your bench press or squat this amount of pounds in eight weeks, things like that. We set small achievable benchmarks because that's what keeps us going. So by doing that, by setting short-term and long-term goals, you are going to find yourself more sustainable um, being able to sustain your muse re resolution a lot easier. So, Noah, what's the third one here? All right, not having clear goals. I know I can probably speak for Noah and the other coaches um, on our team. We get inquiries all the time with very general, broad goals. I want to lose weight. I want to put on muscle. Um, things like that. Those aren't, all those, although those are very good goals, they are not clear goals, okay? We need to work on clear objectivity. Okay, I want to lose um, 10 pounds in the next eight weeks. You know, that is a very sustainable 
goal for most people, right? Mm -hmm. um, at the end of this 12 week training block, I want to increase my squat by 20 pounds. Mm -hmm. That can be a very achievable goal if programmed correctly along the way. Where we fall into problems with people with New Year's resolutions we see is that they have this just general goal. And when we have a general goal, um, it's hard to stay focused on it. Yeah, and one thing I'd like to add about the goals, and I actually, um, one of my clients just started with me when she inquired, she noted that um, she wants to look like a WBFF bikini pro, yep. but she also mentioned like, my current level of commitment in my lifestyle doesn't allow me to put forward the work necessary to do that. So I understand that until I can make those changes, my goals are not in line with my current level of commitment or ability to commit. Yeah. So make sure that those two are in line when you're choosing the goal. Well, and that's great on your client's part that she recognizes that. I was very happy. Yeah, yeah that's, that's huge. So recognize what might be holding you back. Recognize what might be getting in the way of, um, of achieving a goal. Like, why is it not clear enough for you? Do you have something in your life that is stressing you out, that is coming up, that you just can't really focus on? Um, try to figure out what those are and then narrow down what your specific goal is. Yeah. Okay, so this is one thing that I've really been stressing lately and that's the all or nothing mentality. You know, black so, and white thinking. So you saw it in the intro that we did. I said I wanted to go to the gym six times a week, but I only go once or twice now. And some people have it in their mind, and I'll keep using the, going to the gym for an example. Like, if they can't make it to the gym six times a week because that's how many times Arnold went to the gym, like, they're not going to progress. Right. That's wrong. Three times is better than none. Absolutely. One time is better than none. And if you have a week where you can't go, don't stop going for weeks on end. Mm -hmm. Just get right back into it. Again, it's not all or nothing. Well, and to that point, if you can't make it to the gym, say you're traveling. Say you're somebody that has a, uh, a busy work schedule, they're traveling a lot, or they just can't make it to the gym. You can always do something at your house. Exactly. You can do body weight exercises, you can do push-ups, you can get a pull-up bar for your uh, doorway, right? You can do planks for your abs, you can do walking lunges, you can do things, guys. Um, it's not always about what doing something that's um, you know optimal, it's about doing something that's going to be efficient, right? And doing things like that, body weight exercises, um, going outside, going for walks, going for runs, that is what's going to be efficient for you at that time, and we can just keep maximizing on that. And then like Noah said, just because you cannot go to the gym for three or four days or a week, that doesn't mean that your whole plan is thrown off. Right. You get right back on schedule, you get rid of this all or nothing mentality. Same goes with food. Exactly. You know, with your nutrition, you have one day where you just it's not in your cards to track or it's very hard. You want to take a day off, okay, so be it. It's not that one meal, it's not that one day that's going to throw things off. Right. It's what's going to keep you in line is those thousands of other meals, all those other days where you are on point. Yep. I did this, uh, I did a post a while back about um, kind of something along the similar lines, but if you eat four meals a day on average, that's about 1,460 meals a year. Okay. I, oh, this was, I brought this up during the holiday post. Oh, this is what it was. Yeah. So people freak out about, you know, holidays, Thanksgiving, Christmas, other big meals, right? You've got to put things in perspective. You've got to get rid of this all or nothing mentality. That's maybe one meal out of almost 1,500 that you're going to eat during the year. You can't think that that's going to make or break you, okay? Um, having one great meal is not going to make you, and having one bad meal is not going to break you. The big thing is, is getting right back on track the next day. We all have stuff to come up. We travel at expos. We travel to shows for clients, things like that. It's not always optimal to have um, our meals there for us that we're used to. Mm. But you do the best you can. This is where flexible dieting comes in handy. Me personally, I like eating structured meals throughout the day, but I have that ability to flexible diet when need be. And I know Noah practices it probably a little bit more than I do. Yes, yes. We, um, we have nice food locations near the we near the office that I enjoy. Yeah, Tampa is a great area for food guys. Yeah. So but um one thing is like my clients will ask me like what if I what if I overate at this restaurant mm -hmm. and I don't realize it. Well first off I'll say if you're in a fat loss phase, you're better to try and overestimate yes. what you're eating. But even if like there's fifty calories worth of oil in there that you didn't account for, 
in the grand scheme of things, like you're on point for all your other meals, don't worry about it. Right, and I get questions a lot from people like, hey, like I hit my macros, but my calories aren't adding up. They're not the same. If you're using something like MyFitnessPal or another tracker, there is gonna be a little leeway between your calories and what your macros should be, right? Yeah, so actually one of the posts that I've, on Instagram that I've had the best engagement with is a post in where I discuss why calories might not match up with your macros on things like MyFitnessPal. Right. That's because um, labeling um, companies actually can round right. the calorie counts. Um, anybody can create an entry into MyFitnessPal. Yep. So sometimes I'll go in there and like, <clears throat> I don't know, I'll see a slice of pizza and it's got like 50 grams of protein, zero fat, zero <laughs> yeah. carbs. Yeah, people get crazy with it, guys. If you're like doing anything, if you're trying to track stuff like meat, anything like that, I would type in USDA. Yep. Um, try to look for stuff that's pretty official. If you see a few things pop up and they're within a couple calories, you know, maybe 10 calories of each other, it's pretty safe you can go with any of those. Yeah. It's the ones that are you see on the list there that are drastically off from everything else, right. don't pick those. And this isn't like common, like you don't see this all the time. Right, right. And one more reason is because of net carbs. Mm -hmm. So products like Halo Top ice cream and oh, yeah. Quest, good, yeah. Quest protein bars, into their calorie counts, they subtract calories from net carbs um, and sugar, sugar alcohols. Yeah. Yeah. And the way sugar alcohols work are that they are half the amount of calories as a normal carb. So a normal carbs four calories per gram, sugar alcohols are two. So they give you less calories but for the same sweetness. But they do, like Noah said, they subtract those from it when in reality they shouldn't. As well as fiber. And fiber does not have four calories per gram. But listen, to keep everybody from pulling their hair yeah. off, that's how we track it. Yeah. we're. The attention, the, the attention is in the details, right? But you have to understand that um, you can't get so bogged down in being off by a couple grams here or there. You know, if you're off by more than like 10%, then yeah, that's, that's gonna be a little troublesome, right? That's where we need to start fixing um, adherence and consistency. But going out to a restaurant, don't, don't miss that opportunity with friends, with family, to enjoy the occasion because you're afraid you might be off by, you know, 50 calories, something like that. You're gonna do the best you can. Um, you're gonna wake up the next day, you're gonna get right back on track, okay? That's what we tell all our clients to do right after holidays. Um, don't, I guess that can lead into this last point. You wanna go over this one? Yeah, so this is a bit of a bonus. And one thing I do notice personally when I go to the gym mm -hmm. is the cardio section is absolutely filled with people. And a lot of people complain about their free weights being taken up. That's not always the case with me because I just can't get on a treadmill. Yeah. And again, we're not trying to put you down or anything. No. We are happy that you're in the gym and we want to try and channel this energy. Mm -hmm. But cardio isn't the only way to create a calorie deficit. Yeah. And you also need resistance training to help you maintain the lean body mass that you have. Cardio is not going to increase your metabolism. Okay. Yes, you'll burn some fat, you'll lose some weight. But cardio does not build new lean body mass, okay? Not the way that resistance training does. So cardio is great, but understand the reason why you're doing cardio, all right? You're actually doing it for heart health. Mm -hmm. You're not doing it necessarily to burn more calories. It's not gonna be as much more, it's not gonna be that much more efficient than just being in a caloric deficit overall and making up that calorie, that caloric expenditure through weight training. Yeah. So definitely, definitely do cardio. It's definitely important for your overall health, but don't be one of those that the day after you blow through your macros, you have that all or nothing mentality, you turn straight to cardio as the answer. That is not gonna be the answer. And one more thing about cardio, it's boring. <laughs> I actually find it very cathartic. Like, in my mind, like it, it, it allows me to kinda, um, kinda shut everything off for a little bit and just yeah. kinda get in that zone. I'm, an, I'm, a, I'm the opposite. Yeah. I'm gonna hit. I'll bleep, we'll bleep that out. We'll bleep that out. Yeah. So, New Year's resolution, all joking aside, they are great, all right? But you need to start thinking of it as a lifetime, lifestyle resolution, right? You shouldn't just be thinking about this in the new year. If it's on your mind right now to start, start right now. We're making this video on December 18th, okay? There's things that I even, I even tell myself, oh, once January 1st comes around, I'm gonna do. But in reality, I need to take a look in the mirror and realize, why aren't I just starting that now? Yeah, exactly. If it's a priority for you, 
you can start it now. Mm -hmm. Okay, so um, no, any parting words? Yeah, no. Um, thanks for tuning in, guys. As always, David and I are accepting one-on-one -on -one coaching clients. We'd love to help you channel that energy of the New Year's resolutions into some sustainable practices, sustainable weight loss, and lasting changes going forward. Absolutely, and um, I'll put both of our emails in the description box below. Noah also has a YouTube channel. I'll link that below. He's putting out some great videos too, and we'll probably kind of go back and forth on these a little bit. One on my channel, one on his, so make sure you go yeah. subscribe. Where can they find you? Uh, you can find me on Instagram, at Noah David Lee, Facebook, at Noah Lee, and I think, David, this is the first video you've made after graduating with your Master of Science, so congratulations there, man. Thank you so much, thank you so much, and this guy was there to support me all the way, I appreciate it. Alright, you guys, go have a great 2020. If you need anything else, you can reach out to us, David at Biolane.com, Noah at Biolane.com, and at Mathis Fitness. We'll be catching you next time. See you guys.